Gay trauma. It's not just one event or one thing. It's a lifetime of layer after layer after layer of added trauma. And yet, we are still fabulous. Welcome to No Two Gays About It, the show for the over 50 gay male, all about the things that are important to over 50 gay men. Hi, I'm Tom Burke. And hi, I am Michael Foley. And we are going to talk about this trauma. Last season, we did a show entitled PTSD, the trauma the gay man have experienced. And we heard from you guys so much. The, it was overwhelming. It really was. And, um, you know, the interesting thing I found about the comments is how similar our storyline is. And it's because we're from a generation that is unique in itself because of what we had to deal with, unlike generations prior and unlike generations since. So there's a connection that we share as, as folks who survived the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. That, yeah, um, no kidding. And yeah. the, the thing that really touched, um, I don't know, not a nerve, but really kind of connected with everybody was the idea of this layers of trauma. I mean, again, the the comments that we were getting were all about that. And it wasn't that just that they were commenting to us. One of the best things Michael and I love is to watch you guys commenting to each other, whether it be on YouTube or over at Patreon. Without and a doubt. Yeah. In case you don't know what Patreon is, it's a really it's a great place for you to help support our show and keep it going. I mean, as passionate as Michael and I are about these subjects, passion don't pay the bills, and it <laughs> really does help us. Uh, Patreon uh, not only is it a place where we are creating this community of men who can talk to each other, talk to us, um, but you also can get little extras like. You could do a Zoom meeting with us or even... Um, Don't forget our Savage Side Eye and the Happy Gay moment. Yeah, we do this bonus right? uh, content, which is not just about the topics that we're talking about, but it kind of takes you behind the mic and learn more about Michael and I and our personal lives. So if you're interested, check out the uh, comments below, click, and you'll learn all about it. But enough of that. Let's get back to this gay trauma, these layers and layers. So let's just quickly list some of the the different layers of trauma that we all our age have experienced. What are some of them, Mike? Let's start with the AIDS crisis, you know, okay. and, and the loss of friends and loved ones and partners that uh, we experienced during that time and really were never given the opportunity to grieve. Um, right. There's bullying, right? Well, that, it's a whole nother level when we were younger. That started so young for so many people. I mean, we were bullied for being sissies or whatever, really young. A lot of people were bullied by their families or just the whole yeah. homophobia of the society that we grew up in. That was a constant layer just being put on top of yeah, us. And let's be real. That was a, that was a tough one because not only were we being bullied at school, or, you know, out on the streets, but literally in our house, that place where we're supposed to feel safe. How do you not yeah. experience trauma in regard to that, where it's a space where you're supposed to experience unconditional love and that's not happening? Right. And so many uh, men turn to ways to kind of cover up all of this, which just added more and more layers of trauma, you know, getting into drugs or, or alcohol and just trying to numb themselves from everything. And I'm going to add um, sex to that. Because, um, you know, sex is a great escape. And um, there is a lot of sexual compulsion within the community, um, you know, right. they, uh, which I think at some point needs to be addressed. Well, here we are. We're, we're here to address all this stuff and get everybody out there talking. Because as we keep saying, we are just starting these conversations and we want all of you out there to join in and continue them with us. Another huge layer of trauma that we are all and I mean all of us carrying around, is guilt. And a lot of that we put on ourselves. So let's get into a lot of these different layers and talk about them. And I think one of the best ways to do that is by reading some of the comments that we got from our PTSD show and really explore this and kind of see how it's affecting all of us. Okay, you up for that? Let's do it. Cool. All right. So one, here's one. First one. I've got a whole bunch of them. Bear with me. Uh, guys, you really hit the nail on the head here. 
layers of trauma is a good way of putting it. For me, it started with sexual abuse as a boy of seven. Oh, that's that's a story that so many of us have heard. Yeah, right? it really is because they see you know they see that we're different and they see yeah. that we're vulnerable and there's a lot of adults who will take advantage of that. So many. Uh, okay, so this guy continues. Then it was a lot of homophobia in my teens, gender dysphoria in my twenties. I was diagnosed HIV at age twenty two. Oh my God, talk about a layer of trauma. You know, uh, and then he, as I said earlier, this guy went into alcoholism in my late yeah. 20s. And then to top all that off, he says that the gay community can be very toxic, toxic. Let's face it. The trauma continues from my own community. But thanks for tackling this subject. <sighs> yeah. Wow. Um, that's that's a lot. That's a lot to unpack because um, right? they're they're. That that is an individual who has experienced basically every level of what it is we're talking about. You know, the abuse, the addiction, the being shunned from friends and family, plus the community. So, and the big one ooh. of being diagnosed with AIDS. Yeah, you know, you and I very fortunate. We you know only saw people who were diagnosed with AIDS. We only knew people. What you know, we didn't get hit by it ourselves. And. Wow. Talk about yet another huge layer that you're going to carry for the rest of your lives. You know, rough here. Listen to this one. Childhood trauma informed my future, as it did for all of us, through parents, siblings, school, religion, etc. Also, in my case, sexual abuse and bullying in high school and then also in the workforce. Religion. I was just going to say, I want to step back and say religion again. Because yeah. that, to me, is the root of all evil on this planet. Everything that is wrong, every ounce of guilt, <clears throat> every shame that we've experienced is because of the church. Well, I'm not going to agree with that. I'm not going to say every bit of guilt, every bit of shame, because we'll discover some more of that later. But yes, it has especially for young guys like me who grew up in the Catholic church, going to Catholic schools, Catholic high schools. Yeah, that stuff was forced on us. And yet we watched these priests and brothers and right. people kind of all being gay as possible and touching all the little kids. And yet we were the bad ones. Yeah. But if you, again, I've got, I got to go back. If you think about it, the church is what teaches people to hate. Right. And, it is directed at our community because we're told, not only are we told, the rest of society is told that who we are as gay men, gay women, trans, bi, whatever you are, is wrong, is inherently wrong. And so society is taught that. So they are taught to shun us. Right. So th there, there is a deep root in regard to religion as far as I'm concerned. And yeah, I told, I'm with you. I, I was raised Catholic and I still have a lot of resentment and... Um, Right. Disdain for the church. This this guy, uh, this comment kind of goes with what you just said, but I'm going to read the whole thing. It's a yeah. little bit long. I was derided for throwing like a girl at age four. Yeah. Right? So it's wrong. I, right? I, uh, uh, Freaking four-year-old, he's a baby. Who and cares how he throws? You know, we talk about the layers of trauma. Yeah. What that's bringing up for me it, it is so infuriating that obviously there is still something there we need to deal with, right? If something like that infuriates me on the level that it is right now, yeah, there's still trauma tied to that. And that's the layers we're talking about during this show. Right. Uh, you know, in <clears throat> fact, one of our bonus content that we did, uh, some of you might have seen it, we put it out on YouTube. Uh, normally, it's just on Patreon, but we put a couple of things out on YouTube. And it was about, I was watching a show on Netflix uh, baby reindeer and all of a sudden was just like whoa yep. hit with this stuff that i thought i had worked through you know from my 20s 40 years ago uh yeah so it's all in there all right let me finish this guy um so i was excluded from neighborhood play with other boys and so and had no opportunity to learn and practice yeah that makes sense i was labeled a sissy and targeted by bullies to be beaten up on a regular basis. Mm. My parents 
took a passive approach, which added another layer of trauma. Yeah, because again, the people who are supposed to protect you are turning yeah. a blind eye because a lot of, especially the men, thought, well, it'll toughen him up. Right. You know, he won't be such a sissy. Yeah. And oof, that's so that's many of one. us, our age, older, uh, you know, we were raised by men who fought in World War II, you know, who were the, what were they called? The whatever, greatest, greatest generation. generation. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, for me, my father was like the the end of them, uh, the youngest of that that group. But they were these like macho men. And of course, if we threw a ball that wasn't exactly like, uh, I don't know, major Tom league. Bieber. Let's go Tom yeah. Bieber. Being a Whoever the hell that is. He's a, he was um, a Met. He was a pitcher. <laughs> okay. No clue, but thank you for, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if we didn't throw that way or if, you know, we were kind of labeled right away. And then to have a parent just turn their blind eye to that. Well, there was, an ironic thing, there was an ironic thing that was tied to that. And that was a sense of embarrassment from the parent. Oh, totally. Like they didn't want their child to be seen as a sissy or a fag. So there's a sense of embarrassment to them. So, you know, maybe ignoring it was the best way that they could handle it. Definitely not the best way in the bigger picture, but. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I know we have, we keep saying, well, they were doing the best that they could. I don't know. You it know, if you're relinquish, is- it doesn't relinquish them from responsibility. Don't get me right. wrong. But, you know, somebody can't do better until they know better. And sadly, but, men of that generation did not know how to be empathetic or express feelings. They just didn't. Right. You, had, you had to eat that shit. I totally get that. But as this kid said, he was beaten up on a regular basis and his parents just turned Nothing. away. Yeah. That was a lot how of How do you do parents. that? Yeah. yeah. That's that's just so wrong Wrong. Mm -hmm. so wrong um yeah wow um and then so this is what he wrote and this goes back to what you had said earlier i can't help but ask for kids this young four years to even you know a little bit older where the hell did all of this vicious gender enforcement come from it had to come either directly or indirectly from the adults in the neighborhood their personal experiences, media, politics, and as you said, of course, church. religion. Yeah, yep. church. Yep. To you me, know, again, oh, that is the root. Where does society learn its moral? I can't even say moral because there is no morality involved with hating a group of people. Right. Where does it learn that from? The church. Yeah. Wow. It, 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 and again, to me, it is. It, it, if you look at any war that's been waged, look what's going on in the Middle East right now. What does that have to do with? Religion. That's the foundation and the basis of everything that's going on there. Right. And- okay. Here, here's another foundation of why, and this guy explains it to us. I have complex PTSD, which is what we're talking about, layers of, of trauma, because of gay fear and punishment from my father and sister. I went through hell and I am still damaged because of all the trauma. Fear. Fear of, as you said, oh, my kid's a sissy, so I'm going to be perceived as this really right. bad parent. Or, you know, because my child is different, there's a fear of what everyone's going to say about me. Or, I don't know about you, but so many gay men that I know, when they were coming out to their families, the parents were like, but you're not going to have a normal life. No one's going to treat you with, like that fear. Of I want to different- flip the script on one statement that he okay. made. Um, you're not damaged. I'm trying to get through this without being emotional. Um, you're not damaged. They were. We were perfect in who we were. Yeah, but he's damaged from what happened. I understand that, but he he described himself as being damaged. And if that's still something that he carries, I just want to challenge him to you're not damaged. Well, I don't think he was saying that he I don't think he was saying that he was damaged because he was gay. He was damaged because of this fear and hate from his family. Yeah. You know, that as we all are, we carry that damage. That is what yeah, we are not damaged at our core. Yeah. 
That's, no, not that, at- that was that was the point I wanted to make there because I okay. do, I do know a lot of men who still perceive themselves as damaged goods. Yeah, and I, I just want to challenge folks out there who may perceive themselves as that to flip the script. You were not damaged. We were perfect. We were who we were born to be. Right. They were the damaged ones because they didn't understand who we were. Exactly. But then all of this crap that they put on us did Without damage us in a way. All right. Here's the next one. I love this. Uh, this uh, layer of trauma, PTSD, is the most overlooked aspect of being a gay guy. I'm 55 years old and no one's ever said this to me. That's why we're here. <laughs> we're we're here to talk about this stuff that nobody mentions. You know, but we're al- we're also here to hopefully motivate you to have these conversations with other people in your life because you're going to exactly. realize, like I said at the top of the show, how similar our experiences are. And I think the more you talk to people about it, it just takes a bit of a weight off of you, and then you get to go, oh my god, you went through that too. That's the thing, the connection. And we see that in these comments that we're getting on whatever show it is. It's the connection. Yeah. And it's funny, I was just reading one. I don't know if you saw this comment where it was a guy in England who was commenting to a guy in Michigan. Yeah. And they had the same experience. And that was, I loved that. That was so awesome. And it just shows that the world is huge, but it's also so small. And as you said, when we first started the show, Guys our age have these same experiences no, way, no matter where you've been, yeah. you know? And that's why it's so great that we can talk about it and now we can all talk about it together. Uh, great, here comes another one. This is a tough one though. It starts with the bullying when you're young, but the worst layer of trauma is the guilt that we all put on ourselves. Because we're told we're wrong. We're told yeah. we're we're told we're not who who we are, and then we be ashamed one, of it. Yeah, every one of us, little boys, were laying in our beds in our bedrooms, thinking, "Why do I have to be this way? Why am I different?" and and feeling bad about who we were. We're alone, know, that, just feeling alone, totally alone. Because who could we talk to? Yeah. You know, whatever your dad, your sister, whoever just called you a sissy. Who, who can you talk to if you can't talk to your closest family members? Yeah, I mean, we didn't have, we didn't have you know, a teacher in school who we could go to talk to. That's why, you know, I look at somebody like Tim Walls, um, yeah. who back in the 90s opened the door for the community to walk in and have a conversation with him. Right. Before, before it was, you know, an acceptable behavior, this teacher and his wife opened their door to allow kids to come in and have a conversation in a safe space. Even right. if it, that space wasn't at home, he gave he and she gave that to them and we didn't have that. No, we did not. I mean, we did not have the internet. We did not have books to read. We did not have anyone that we could confide in usually. So, now question, because you I know you went to an all male Catholic school. Yes. What did you did you have any other contemporaries? who you could have a conversation with, or was that just off limits completely? Totally off limits. But we all laughed about the clergy teachers who were like hanging out at the pool or who would walk in at the dressing rooms. And we all laughed about those guys, you know, because we knew what they were doing, but God forbid any one of us. And, you know, you know, when someone's gay, you know, the other guys in your classes who are gay, but Yeah, unfortunately, at that time, at that college prep school I was in, no, you couldn't. You just know. You know what sucks is you're forced to laugh at it, so you don't become thrown under the spotlight. Because if you weren't laughing, people might be like, "Oh, are you gay?" Right, Um, and you couldn't you couldn't afford to let down that wall, and and possibly have somebody think that. Because then, no kidding. Yeah, and even. I look back, I was l- luckily, I was very popular with everybody. And, you know, I was in the honors classes. I also played sports. I was in the theater. Like, I had all these different groups of friends. And there were some other gay guys that I knew who were not popular. 
but I couldn't associate with them. Ooh, see, that's heartbreaking in itself. That is a layer of trauma yeah. that I carry. I, yeah, and I'm I, assuming guilt too, because you totally. saw, you saw it and you did nothing, right? I couldn't. For your, for your and, own protection, yeah. Exactly. And yet, this is yet another layer of trauma that I'm going to carry forever, yeah. that guilt of it. Um, all right, let's go through another one. I love this. This is great. It's like being in therapy, isn't it? <laughs> um, all right. Definitely the trauma started as a young boy. All the other kids, adults, and teachers knew I was gay. I was a marked boy for the bullies. By the time I was 12, oh my God. By the time I was 12, I was in full drug addict mode. At 12, self-medication, but yet it saved my life. Yeah, I was going to say we do what we have to do in order to survive. And sometimes that's turning to something that's not necessarily the healthiest for us, which for me, you know, that's why I mentioned the sexual addiction or sexual compulsion at the beginning of the show, because for me, that that was always a way for me to numb myself. Yeah. And I still fall into that. Um but the great thing is, is I don't experience guilt about it anymore. I'm like, this is a bridge that's going to help me because sometimes the emotions are just too much, right? You, you just, yeah. it, it's so hard to process everything in a single moment. And sometimes the way to that, you have to get out of yourself. Um, right. And I just encourage folks, including myself to maybe go to the gym <laughs> instead of going to a sex club, um, you know, is probably the better option, but I don't beat myself up anymore if the latter happens. Not only just going to a sex club, but picking up that drink or taking that yeah. pill or whatever you know, the whatever. compulsion is, it's it's all the same. But he, this is this guy continues at twelve. At least while I was high, I could be comfortable mm. in who I was. Yeah. Oh, that's heartbreaking. And you get you get to escape. Yeah. And like he said, he survived, and that is the important thing because he obviously dealt with that stuff. Yeah. On, a, on a very healthy level and kudos to you, man. Okay. Are you ready for one that's really going to touch us so deeply? Are you seriously trying to make me cry during this I'm show? I'm so Just, trying to make you cry. Are you kidding? You know, yes. Yeah. You got me close a couple of times. So No, but this one, and Ooh. as you said, um, you know, oh, I was putting together some of this stuff and I, I would have to get up and walk around my office and just yeah. be like, whoa, this was one of them because this is something that is going to really touch every one of us out there, at least if you're honest with yourself. How many of us gays added layers of trauma onto ourselves because our bodies were not perfect? Super. We were too fat or too skinny or because of some form of body dysmorphia. Don't most gays, gays suffer this trauma? Yes, we do. Or because we aren't cute enough or have the right hair or the right body type. We were young and the bullying trauma was put on us, but we spend the rest of our lives putting this trauma on ourselves. We don't have a good enough body a good enough face, job, career, house, bank account. Feeling trauma is our place of comfort. It is. It's it's a warm blanket that we have grown oh. used to in our life. And um, we crawl under that probably way too much, you know? And yeah. I, so much, and it's this has been from the time I've come out and you've come out, is that body image is such a huge part of the gay community. And it would be a lovely thing to maybe see that fall by the wayside. So I think it is actually, you know, cause I'm out and about now and, um, I see people embracing their bodies more. And I think that's a beautiful thing. Okay. Um, and I, I, cause for my whole life, I've had this issue with my love handles. Um, and fortunately in my forties, I developed a new mantra and that was love me, love my love handles. So, you know, the, the more we're not worried about somebody else judging us for how we look, I think the happier our lives get. Well, I think I've mentioned this so many times that I am not so much worried about someone else judging. I am too busy judging my own body. I'm too busy judging, as this guy said, you know, oh, whatever is about. And I too now am trying to 
embrace this new face and body and I love my silver hair and it's it's tough but we have to do it but what's I, your what's your um go to when you feel that coming on what do you do to get yourself out of that self judgment space how do you how do you work with that wait are we supposed to, we're, we get out of that <laughs> <laughs> yes you do totally do it i'm going to give you an example of how i did like okay during some of the festivals here in town i do something that i would never do yes i still feel a little bit uncomfortable but if it's a nice day i'll take my shirt off and walk around with my shirt off which i would never which is ironic i would never do when i was younger yeah and actually had a decent body um so doing that that's me pushing myself beyond my comfort zone so i'm just wondering what you do when you feel that self judgment coming on is there you got a trick for anybody out there no i no? do not i i personally do not i am in the process of trying to figure this out so let's throw that out to all of our guys out there how do we do this how do gonna, we um, you know what come to pride with me this year and take your shirt off yeah okay <laughs> so again i know i've talked a lot about my past i was paid a lot of money to have my clothes off in front of cameras and yet even during that period of my life, I could not walk down the street without a shirt off. I could not walk outside with it. I know a lot of that goes back to the way I was raised. I was raised a way like I could not come out of my bedroom if I was not fully dressed. Shoes, you know, my shirt had to be tucked in. The shirt had to be ironed. So I know that probably goes back to a lot of the whatever childhood trauma just about that alone. But yeah, I, I I couldn't do it. I could not come right. to pride with you and take my shirt off. Okay. Maybe I can work towards that. That's something yeah. I could work towards. Wear a tank you know? top, right? Wear a tank top. Oh, I can wear a tank top. Yeah. Like, fabulous in a tank top. Baby, um, baby steps. I am, I am amazed, though, at those guys who can do that. I look at them and I'm like, wow, you go, girl. Yeah. Um, you know, just... I wish I could be those guys. That's why I say I'm, notice, I'm noticing a big change in the in the community, and maybe it's just here in Palm Springs, um, where all different types of body types. You know, that's what I love about uh, Palm Springs Pride, is that it's everybody. It's it's a it is a rainbow, um, and everybody just celebrating themselves, and right. it's a beautiful thing to witness. Oh, let's talk a little bit more about some of these other things that this gentleman listed, not just the body type, but these layers of trauma that we're putting on ourselves that because we're not good enough, not having the right job or career. A lot of people do that to themselves, you know, yeah. and it's that constant comparing to somebody else, which that's the death of anybody. But I think we got that as children. Well, Joey next door doesn't throw a ball like that. You know, your sister's boyfriend, the quarterback of the football team, doesn't have a lisp. <laughs> you know, like, I, yeah, think I, think we this, were... I think this one is very societal based where, yeah. you know, keeping up with the Joneses. It's, right. It's, it's, it's been there forever. You always have to have what your neighbor has or you have to have one better than them. That that's instilled in us from a very young age. And I think that compounded with everything else we deal with makes it even more of a challenge. Because so much of this, what what is the first question? And this irks the crap out of me. You know, you meet somebody in a bar. What do you do? What do you do? Yeah. How about, who are you? Tell me something about yourself. Where do you come from? How about that instead of, what do you do? Because there's judgment tied to that. May not be deliberate, but there's definitely judgment tied to it. I'm reading about this layers of trauma that gay men are putting upon themselves I found this one article that I thought was really interesting. It can go two ways. All of this guilt, all of these, this trauma that people have been putting on us, the bullying, all of that stuff, the AIDS crisis that we've we've lived through. It can either either drive you to be like, well, fuck all of you, I'm going to succeed and I'm going to be so successful and I'm going to have so much money and whatever. Or it can go the other way where it stops people from moving forward. Because why bother? This this is my lot in life and this is as good as it's going to get. Yeah. Yeah. Which then again is 
putting more layers on which either way you go because <laughs> you are trying to keep up with the Joneses yeah. or have way more than the Joneses or all of this, especially with gay men, you know, having the better house, the better car, the better clothing. I have better shoes. Of course I have better shoes than anybody. Have you seen my sh- collection? Okay. No, Imelda. But- okay. Imelda. We, you know, we get it. <laughs> or, you know, so there's that layer of the trauma for those guys. And then the other guys are putting this like, I'm such a loser. I didn't do the right thing. I made all the wrong, wrong choices. Although I'm, we all say that to ourselves, you know, especially at this age, it's like, Oh my God, why did I turn that corner? You know, why didn't I choose that or whatever? But it's just, as I said at the very beginning, it's a lifetime of layer upon layer upon layer. And now what we need to do at this age, while we're moving into this new chapter, or a lot of us are already in this chapter of life, we got to figure out how to deal with this in a better way. And what's the first step to dealing with it? Talking about it, acknowledging it and talking about it. Yeah, it's that acceptance and acknowledgement first. We ha- that's a personal thing. We have got to acknowledge and accept. And then as we're doing, let's talk about it. Let's if we can't do we have to find the support. If you don't have that friend group, if you don't have people around you, therapy, find people online. There's so many great therapists online or or support groups online. Yeah, talk about it. And as we're seeing in our comments, we've all experienced the same thing. So like you just said, this is the trick that I use. Well, then maybe someone else has a trick that they can add to the mix. And eventually we can all heal ourselves and be really happy and healthy. And for for those of you guys sitting at home, you know, who may be in an isolated area and it's more challenging for you to find a community because you are isolated, If you're watching this, you have access to communities online. Um, You know, you could go to the LA Gay and Lesbian Center. You could find a Facebook page that Palm Springs has half a dozen of them where you could actually have conversations with other men who are experiencing what it is you're experiencing. So you're not as isolated as you may think you are. Just push those boundaries. And like I said, we're creating communities ourselves. We have our group on YouTube start commenting, connect to each other. We have our group on Facebook. We also have, as I said earlier, our group on Patreon. We're trying to create these communities of men like us, over 50 gay men who can talk about this stuff together and try to find ways that we can have the most amazing next chapter of our lives and maybe leave some of these layers behind us, even though that's- There will always be another layer, right? I mean, you think- you, because you shared a story about baby reindeer again on on uh, Patreon, where right. you thought you had dealt with something, right, um, and you thought you moved past it, but it's just amazing how life goes. Oh, okay, y- yes, you've dealt with it up to this point, but here's a little bit more you have to take a look at. Yeah, and that's such a healthy thing because it helps you just clear up more stuff. It helps you clean out the attic and just exactly become, become a little bit lighter. You know, um, so. Don't ever think that you're done with this journey of learning and sort of digging up that pain because you're not going to be. It's just not going to happen. But to deal with it on a whole nother level is really a gift. And, you know, working through it is is part of our job as, you know, becoming more adult every single day. Oh, I don't want to be a more adult than <laughs> I, I already am. Either. I don't either. I don't. All right. Yeah. But for for you guys out there, as Michael's saying, yeah, let's keep doing this, but let's do it together. So if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure, first of all, make sure you hit like and subscribe, please. And then leave us a comment. Let us know your thoughts about these layers. If you have any tricks that we can move forward and start sharing it with everybody else and we'll come back and we'll read some more of your comments and we'll get to the bottom of this and we'll kind of free us all a little bit. Yeah. How else can guys uh, get in contact with us? Guys, you can research across social media at no two gays about it. Just remember it's the number two, no two gays about it. And that is everywhere you are on social media. That is where we are. Um, and including TikTok. So join us, please join the conversation. And Tom and I really do li- read every single comment. Um, 
So what you say is even those important. bad ones that you guys leave us, the, the mean ones. And we want to send a few thank yous to some guys out there, especially those of you whose comments I read today. I didn't use your name because I didn't ask for permission, but thank you very much, first of all, for commenting and then letting us spread your word because they really were important to talk about. Yeah, we won't take it for granted. Thank you. And we also want to send a, a huge shout out to our Patreon subscribers at our executive producer role. And that is Kurt Bremer and Lauren Javier, John Bonasante, Jason Cruz, and Ted Zalewski. Thank you so much for supporting us. Yeah, guys, thanks so much. We really appreciate it. We couldn't do it without you, but we could not do it without all of you out there. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you for all your comments. Thank you for all your likes and subscribes. Um, until next time, let's all get out there and heal a little bit. Yeah, have a good cry. It helps. Um, and until next time, thank you, Tom. Thank you for this conversation. And thank you guys for listening. Thanks much.